Oxidative stress, antioxidants, and free radicals are three of the most commonly used buzzwords in nutrition cycles. But very few people actually know what they mean, let alone understand their impact on your health. So in this video, I will explain the three terms, tell you how they relate to each other, why they are important for your health, and at the end of the video, I will also show you how to lower oxidative stress and increase your antioxidant intake through diet and supplements. Okay, so it's probably best if I start with an explanation of oxygen and what role it plays in your body. This will be a little technical, but it will make sense at the end, trust me. So as you know, our body needs food to keep it running, because food is basically a store of energy. But to transfer that energy from the food to your body, we need oxygen. So we eat food and we breathe in oxygen from the air. Now, once oxygen reaches the cell in your body, it is used to transfer the energy from the nutrients in the food to your body. For example, the energy from a glucose molecule, from the carbohydrates that you consume, and then to create ATP, adenosine triphosphate, which is the energy currency in your body. This process requires oxygen. So without oxygen, you die because your cells can no longer create any energy. What you have to know here, though, is that oxygen is a double-edged sword. It is critical to life, but it is also very reactive. And this is where free radicals come into play. In the process of metabolizing food, so turning food into energy, electrons are taken from the glucose molecule and then transferred to other molecules. So this is the transfer of energy that I was talking about earlier. Sometimes, these electrons are actually transferred to the oxygen itself. What that means is that the oxygen in your body now has an additional electron that likes to bind itself to something, because electrons usually like to be in pairs. And this is a free radical. It's a molecule with an unpaired electron. What it does then is to look for surrounding electrons that it can pair with, because without it, it is highly reactive and unstable. So it will grab the missing electron from surrounding molecules. And these surrounding molecules can really be anything. It can be your tissue, it can be your organs, it can even be your DNA. Once it's grabbed an electron from a surrounding molecule and paired it with its own additional electron, it is then stable again. But the molecule it grabbed the electron from is now unstable. This sets up a chain reaction, where each molecule gets first robbed of an electron and then itself becomes an electron thief because it also wants to be stable. This chain reaction would continue and destroy your entire body pretty quickly if it couldn't be stopped naturally by the body. And this is where antioxidants come into play. They donate a free electron without becoming unstable themselves. So they're kind of the nice guy in all of this. They say, hey, you can have my electron, I don't care. These antioxidants can be enzymes, so proteins in your body, or they can be nutrients, and the most well-known is probably vitamin C. Now, a healthy lifestyle and a good diet will make sure that these free radicals and the antioxidants are in balance. Because you can't totally get rid of free radicals. They are a natural byproduct of your metabolism, and they also occur in our environment. For example, through cigarette smoke, pollutants, heavy metals, pesticides, all the contaminants that you find in our environment. So what you always want to make sure of is to have enough antioxidants readily available in your body so that they can put an end to the chain reaction that I talked about earlier. If that healthy balance between antioxidants and free radicals is disturbed, we speak of oxidative stress. So usually it's referred to having too many free radicals and not enough antioxidants. This unbalance can cause inflammation, it can cause tissue damage, and even DNA damage, which later can trigger cancer growth, for example. Really, uncontrolled free radicals promote all kinds of diseases and chronic illnesses. And this is actually sometimes referred as the trigger of all illness, because it all starts with the initial free radical trigger that causes all these problems in your body and this chain reaction. This theory is referred to as the oxidative stress theory of aging. Now, what does all this mean in terms of diet and supplements? How do you lower oxidative stress and increase your antioxidant intake? 
So before we talk about that, there are two common mistakes people make here. The first is that they see all free radicals as evil. This isn't entirely true, because even though free radicals are evil to your body, they are a necessary evil. That's because the body can use the cell-damaging properties of the free radicals to fight off invaders, such as bacteria or viruses. It does this by using the free radicals to damage the cell membrane of the invader, and that way they can't live in your body. A good analogy here is to see free radicals as a knife. You always want to make sure that you don't cut yourself and that you're protected against that, but you can also use the knife as a tool to fight off any aggressors that want to do you harm. So don't see all free radicals as bad, and don't make it the sole purpose of your diet or supplement regimen to eliminate all of them, because you do need them to a certain extent in your body. The next mistake I see people making is to supplement high doses of singular antioxidants, such as vitamin C. In fact, high-dose vitamin C supplementation is very popular online, and it is often touted as a miracle cure for all kinds of illnesses, which unfortunately isn't true. This second mistake really builds on the first mistake that I just talked about. So the person that consumes high-dose antioxidant supplements really thinks of all free radicals as evil. They have heard that antioxidants reduce free radicals, so in their mind, all they have to do is to consume enough antioxidants to get rid of the problem. Unfortunately, this is too simplistic. You see, all nutrients that you consume through your diet or supplements interact with each other in the body. And taking too much ascorbic acid, so synthetic vitamin C, can interact with other nutrients even when it's water-soluble, so even when it doesn't accumulate in the body. For example, too much ascorbic acid lowers ceruloplasmin. Ceruloplasmin is a very important protein in your body that is responsible for copper transport and iron metabolism. It also has antioxidative properties. So if you take too much ascorbic acid, you might bring up one antioxidant, so the vitamin C, but you're actually lowering another. So the net benefit is really zero or even negative because you upset the delicate balance of your body. This also brings me to the last part of the video. What should you do instead? How do you optimize your antioxidant intake and lower your oxidative stress and free radicals? All in a healthy way and without getting any nasty side effects, of course. So the first thing I need to say is that measuring oxidative stress is very complicated and fairly unreliable. It's usually measured indirectly by looking at levels of DNA damage or measuring protein oxidation. In practice, this doesn't work very well and it also doesn't give us any recommendations on what to improve in our diet or our supplements. So I don't recommend going down that rabbit hole. Instead, save your money for the tests and make it your goal to help your body find its natural balance of free radicals and antioxidants again. You do this with the help of three things. First, with a diet that is full of unprocessed or minimally processed whole foods. So this is really the basis of everything. Always start with your diet. Next, you also want to make sure to reduce your toxin exposure. So make sure that you don't smoke, that you reduce the pollutants in your environment, that you don't consume too many toxic metals, such as mercury and fish, and that you don't get too much sunlight, for example. It's important for our health, but don't get sunburned every time you go out in the sun. And lastly, you also want to make sure that you fix your nutrient deficiencies, but without over-supplementation of single antioxidants. So, like I said before, don't take too much vitamin C, for example. Instead, get properly tested for nutrient deficiencies, and then work with someone who has experience with this and who can recommend the right foods and supplements.